Welcome everybody to Abundant Life Chapel online. We're so glad that you could join us today. If you'd like to know more information about us, you can check us out on our social media platforms. We're on Facebook and Instagram. And any other contact information that you need can be found on our website. Special thanks to those who have been supporting us financially. You can continue to do so by downloading the app Tithely and also through our website. I hope today's message will inspire you and build your faith. Today we light the first candle of the Advent wreath. This is the candle of hope. With Christians around the world, we use this light to help us prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of God's one and only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. May we receive God's light as we hear the words of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people are walking in darkness, have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Let us pray together, shall we? Lord, as we look at the birth of Jesus, grant us that light of your love so that we will become lights in the lives of those around us and around the world. Prepare our hearts for the joy and the gladness of your coming, uh, for Jesus is our hope. We thank you, Lord, for all these things. In your name, amen. Heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat. The sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. For as the curse is found, for as the curse is found, for as for as the curse is found. truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his Today we are continuing on with our series, What Jesus Said. A couple of weeks ago, we looked at what Jesus said about treasure. Treasure is what we value, whether it be money or things or, or people. And where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, he said, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And then he transitions into uh, a whole segment about worry. So let's pick it up in Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 25 and following. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or, what, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, 
add a single hour to your life. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that even not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow was thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. There once was a man who went to see a psychologist because he was anxious and stressed out all the time. At the end of the first session, the psychologist gave the man some home or homework leading up to their next session. The psychologist said, I want you to play a round of golf. The man replied, Doc, I really don't think that's a good idea. Usually golf makes me more anxious and, and, and stressed. The psychologist responds, I want you to play uh, a different way this time. Take your clubs, walk the course, but instead of playing with an actual ball, I want you to use an imaginary ball. The man thinks about it for a minute. He thinks, wow, this is kind of weird, but he decides to follow through with it. So the next day, he goes to the course and sets up on, uh, on the first tee box, making sure that no one's looking around as he tees up his imaginary ball. He, he swings the club, and lo and behold, he drives that ball 285 yards right down the middle of the fairway. His second shot lands on the green, and he finishes with a two-putt for par. The second hole produces the same results. As he steps onto the third tee box, uh, the, a man who has been kind of watching him asks, well, what are you doing? The first man tells him about his visit to the psychologist, and, and the second man says, well, do you mind if I join you? The first man thinks about it for a moment. He says, well, sure, why not? So they go back to the first hole and reset the round. They're having a great time until the middle of the fairway of the 18th hole. The score is tied. The first man steps up, swings his club, and says, Would you look at that? The ball is on the green. It's still rolling. Look, look. It's going. Oh, and it's in the cup. Yes, yes, yes. The second man is sitting there shaking his head. He says, Well, that's nice and all, but... You hit my ball. <laughs> William Ng once said, Worry is the interest we pay on tomorrow's troubles. Worry is something that all human beings battle with. Whether it be worrying about the future or worrying about work or worrying about finances, worrying about relationships, worrying about politics. We've all wrestled with worries. And some have developed good coping mechanisms to deal with worry, while others, well, they need some assistance, whether it be medication or professional help. Worry can be a big deal. Now, Emily Holland writes in Chopra.com that worrying too much can affect both mind as well as body in a variety of different ways, such as disrupted sleep, headaches, Difficulty concentrating, nausea, uh, muscle tension, exhaustion, irritability, elevated levels of the stress hormone, cortisol, and, and, or, and difficulty making decisions. Many believe that worry and anxiety are thought to be the same thing, one and the same. Though that may be true to some extent, uh, as, as both refer to fearful uncertainty about something in the future, Newport Institute states that worrying typically happens in relation to a specific situation 
What if I get COVID? Or what if I can't get that job? A worry typically ends once the problem is solved, while anxiety exists as pervasive, uh, persistent symptoms, even without a specific cause. When worrying turns into a loop of repetitive negative thinking, it can trigger anxiety, including the physical effects of worrying on the body, such as a sense of dread, racing heartbeat, or headaches, or even stomach aches. According to Whitney White at BetterHelp.com, worry and anxiety are normal emotional responses to situations that everyone experiences from time to time. The body possesses a complex and intricate system designed specifically to help you address threats that you may encounter. When the brain interprets danger, In a situation, a series of events kicks off in the body, which causes the fight or flight response to come online. Now, worry is a part of the anxiety response. There are emotional, physical, and cognitive thinking components to anxiety. For example, if you're preparing to give a public speech, you may begin to notice fear about your upcoming talk. Though anxiety is bad or isn't bad and can be a normal, healthy response, it, doesn't, it does exist on a spectrum, like clinical anxiety, for instance. Now, I'm not a licensed psychiatrist or psychologist or even a, a licensed counselor, but rather I'm a pastor. So I will be addressing this topic of worry from a spiritual and, and biblical perspective and standpoint. And so let's dig a little further into what Jesus said about worry from our text. Let's pick it up again in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. This is what Jesus said. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? The Greek word for worry here is merim neo which means to be drawn in opposite directions or divided into parts. Figuratively speaking, go to pieces. Jesus is essentially saying, don't let your life be pulled apart. Don't let it go to pieces over trivial things. In our Canadian culture, we can heap on lots of unnecessary pressure and stress on our lives. We place so much stock in our tomorrows that we forget about what's important in our todays. I've witnessed people working and investing and slaving away for their retirement only one day to see them become incapacitated or even pass away even before they can enjoy that future. I've seen people become so stressed, paralyzed over the possibility of of what if or what may happen that they end up doing nothing at all and they're quite miserable. Jesus is communicating here that there is more to life than our worries. And then in his own unique way, Jesus gives an illustration. Let's, Let's take a look at that in verse 26. It says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Now, Jesus could have used uh, a more extravagant animal here, like maybe a lion or a tiger or some other exotic animal, but instead he uses birds. Not an eagle, not a hawk or an owl, just common, everyday birds. I like how Justin Miller of Real Life Christian Church in Claremont, Florida, points out that Jesus states that our Heavenly Father, ours, our Heavenly Father feeds them. Jesus could have easily said that God feeds them, or the Heavenly Father, or God Almighty, or El Shaddai feeds them, but he clearly states here to all of those who were listening back then and all of us who are reading today that our Heavenly Father cares for them. He brings it into uh, an intimate, unique relationship between God and humanity. That we are more valuable to our Heavenly Father than all other created things, especially common birds of the air. And if that wasn't enough, Jesus then continues on with his next illustration. And let's pick it up in verse 28. It says, And why do you worry 
about clothes. See how they see how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Now, he talks about grass and and wildflowers here. (laughs) I wonder if he's referring to like dandelions. If so, how many here feel a little guilty of trying to get rid of them on your lawn? Yikes. Uh, Sorry, Lord. (laughs) I love how Jesus used such tangible illustrations that we could easily relate to or, or see in order to prove a point. It's like Jesus is saying, hey, don't sweat the small stuff. But he really brings things into perspective when he says this in verse 27. Check this out. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Corey Ten Boom once said that worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows. It empties today of its strength. When was the last time you were worried about something? It felt like it was a, it was a mountain in, in the moment. You lost sleep over it. Your, your mind was totally consumed by it. You were irritable, anxious, and even bothered. But then the moment passed. And looking back, was all that worry worth it? Did all your worry solve the problem? Did it improve your life? Did it give you quality or quantity of life? Or did it make it worse? In the grand scheme of it all, did the mountain moment become monumental or did it just pass you by? Sometimes we're so guilty of making mountains out of molehills. Let me ask you today, what have your worries brought you? What have you gained by them? What did you lose? Was it worth it? Did it deepen your faith and your trust in the Lord or did it just make you more anxious or irritable? R.H. Mounts once stated that worry is practical atheism and an affront to God. You see, when we worry, we're actually communicating that, God, you're not enough. That, that God, you're not big enough, you're not strong enough, you're not powerful enough to change the outcome of this situation. Instead of him being omnipotent, our worries indicate indicates that we deem him as impotent uh, or uncaring, uh, unloving, or, or just plain old uninterested in us. Worry hurts our witness and our testimony to others. It affects our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Instead of worrying, Jesus offers this encouragement. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. How many of us worry first before going to God with our problems and our needs? We, we try to go it alone and find a solution, as if thinking that God will be happy with us and proud of us for doing so. But, but then we come up short, and then all we say is maybe say something like this, well, I guess all I can do now is pray. If we were being completely honest with each other to hear, how many of us would raise our hands and say, that's me? But Jesus is saying here, he says, seek God first, not second or third or last option. And then the Apostle Paul echoes this in in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Again, we are to seek God first. What has got you worried right now? What is it that's causing anxiousness to rise up within you? What kind of situation or or circumstance is keeping you awake at night? What fear is plaguing your mind and and weighing heavy on your your soul? What is it about uh, tomorrow that's stealing your joy out of today? Maybe it's time for you to do as, as Peter instructs in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. 
cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Commentator Warren Wiersbe says that worrying about tomorrow does not help either tomorrow or today. If anything, it robs us of our effectiveness today, which means we will be even less effective tomorrow. Someone has said that, uh, that the average person is crucifying himself or herself between two thieves, the regrets of yesterday and the worries of tomorrow. It is right to plan for the future and even to save for the future. But it is a sin to worry about the future and permit tomorrow to rob today of its blessings. He continues on by saying three words that point uh, to victory over worry. The first word being faith, trusting God to meet our needs. Uh, The next word being father, knowing he cares for his children. And the third word being first, putting God's will first in our lives that he might be glorified. If we have faith in our father and put him first, he will meet our needs. E. Stanley Jones writes, I am inwardly fashioned for faith, not fear. Fear is not my native land. Faith is. I am so made that worry and anxiety are sand in the machinery of life. Faith is the oil. I live better by faith and confidence than by fear, doubt, and anxiety. In anxiety and worry, my being is gasping for breath. These are not my native air. But in faith and confidence, I breathe freely. These are my native air. When I think of these words by E. Stanley Jones, I'm reminded of the song Breathe, written by Marie Barnett, Back in the mid-90s, the lyrics go something like this. It goes, this is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I, I'm desperate for you, and I, I'm lost without you. Is seeking God first in your life as important as your next breath? When we feel so overwhelmed by worry, it feels like we can't breathe. But when God Almighty, our Heavenly Father, becomes the air we breathe, no worries in the world could ever extinguish it. Pastor Stephen Sheen of Gregory Drive Alliance Church in Chatham, Ontario, once said, leave tomorrow's trouble to tomorrow's strength, tomorrow's work to tomorrow's time, tomorrow's trial to tomorrow's grace, and to tomorrow's God. Don't try living tomorrow before it comes. Give all your fears and uncertainties to Jesus. Cast all your care or all your cares and anxieties on him because he cares for you. When worry when worries arise, put faith in your father first. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this message. I pray that it will bring encouragement, maybe even healing to somebody today. Lord, that it will calm those anxious waters of worry that are are surrounding them. Lord, no matter what kind of mountain or obstacle they face today, I pray that your presence would be the air they breathe. I pray, Lord, that they would feel you so close. I think of Peter when he was walking on the water. He was there within arm's reach of you. I think of the, 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 the three brave men in the Old Testament, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were willing to die for you and thrown into a, to a fiery furnace, and your presence was with them, and, and no flame t- uh, burned them or t- hurt them or, or destroyed them. God, I pray that we would have faith like the mustard seed to see mountains and obstacles move out of our lives. Lord, whatever is the cause of worry today, 
I pray that people would be courageous enough, that we would be courageous enough to lay it at your feet, that we would be willing to seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, knowing with confidence that you will give us what we need in our moments of need. I thank you, Lord, for your presence that goes with us today. I give this all to you, all power, all glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm glad that you could join us today. You can join us here live and in person, 94th Street, right here in Lactabonny at 1045 a.m. Or you can continue to join us right here. Same time, same YouTube channel. God bless everyone. <laughs>